Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'm going to be talking about Ogame and just giving a tour of the account that I have been working on for the past few years. So as always, chapters are going to be listed down below if you want to skip ahead to specific points in this video. And if you want to try out Ogame, there's a link in the description and in the pinned comment down below. So Ogame is a browser game right off the bat. And what that means is you can play it right on your browser. So Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Opera, Brave, whatever you're using, you can play Ogame through that. In addition, there is an app currently being developed for iOS and Android that it's still in the beta state, but by the time you're watching this video, it may be out of that beta state. Ogame itself is a space themed strategy game, and really it's more of a war game. You're building up an empire, you're building up fleets to attack other players, to defend yourself from other players, to defend allies. Uh, you can work with other players or you can attack other players. There's many different ways to play this game. And with the, the core gameplay loop, you're, you're building up an empire, you're building up your planets, you're increasing your mines to increase your resource production. You're protecting your planets. You're looking for other players that have left their resources out in the open so you can go take them. But there's many ways to play the game, and in future content pieces, I will be diving into many of those topics quite a bit more in depth. So, Ogame is also a game that has been around for a very long time. It initially launched all the way back in 2002, but it is still receiving updates to this day, which is one of the reasons that I am starting to do content for it. I have been playing the game on and off for over a decade now. I First tried the game out, I want to say, back in 2008 or 9, over on the .org community on Universe 42 and 35. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing then. I was a fair bit younger, and I didn't take the time to understand the mechanics. So as soon as I got attacked by a, another player and my fleet was wiped out, I pretty much quit, but I picked the game back up a few years ago and took the time to figure out some of the mechanics, figure out the basic things that I needed to do to protect myself, and have been able to develop a fairly large account in the past few years. So the account that I currently play is one that I started over on the US Wesin server. So Wesin was a two times fleet speed, seven times economy speed server. Uh, the really unique thing with Wesin was that it had the ACS mechanics turned off. ACS is the Alliance Combat System. It's basically the system that allows you to work with other players to attack the same target or to work with another player to defend them from an attack. So I didn't really understand it too well. And going into the game again, I was worried about being teamed up on. So I saw that this server or this universe had the ACS mechanics turned off and was thinking that it would end up being a, a good choice for me to get back into the game, that it might be a bit more peaceful being that all of the combats would have to be one-on-one -on -one engagements. I was wrong. Uh, having the ACS mechanic disabled was not the best choice. I didn't really get attacked much myself on Wesin. But the issue ended up being was that with the ACS mechanic turned off, if I was ever attacked, the Alliance members that I had could not come over and defend me. And if one of my Alliance members was under attack, I couldn't use my fleet to go and help protect them. So having that mechanic turned off, it, it meant that the server was peaceful in some ways, but it also meant that if there was an attack, Nobody could help me, and I couldn't help my allies. So looking back, it was not the best choice. Uh, but thankfully, things worked out quite well for me on Wesin. I started about a month after Wesin had started up. And uh, even though I was a month late, by the time that server or that universe had ended up shutting down and my account was pushed over to another universe, I had developed an account large enough that I had taken over the top spot on that universe. And the way I did that is through the version seven expo uh, expedition combats. So 
expeditions are a PVE mechanic in the game. And with the version seven release of the game, there was a way that you could have combats against the PVE entities in those expeditions and profit massively from them. That has since been nerfed quite massively. But to summarize my growth in the first 10 to 11 months of me playing the game. So from March through the beginning of the March through the end of 2019, I had gotten my account up from zero points all the way up to around 50 to 60 million points. In the 10 months that I, or the, about the nine or 10 months that I took advantage of the expo combats from the end of 2019 through about halfway through 2020, I had come the account from that 50 to 60 million points to up around 500 million points. So that is, that was a massive leap for my account and being, I was really one of the few on the universe that was taking advantage of the expedition combats. I was able to take over the top spot on that universe. Now, when Wesin was being shut down, I was given a few different options as to what universe I could move my account to. And there were some really fast fleet speed options. However, I was really burnt out on the game at that point and was basically looking for the most peaceful universe that I could get into. So I ended up going with Terra Z, which had one times fleet speed, so half the speed that I had had on Wesin, but it also had a significantly lower debris field setting. So debris field is uh, the amount of resources that is put into orbit of your planet after a fleet on fleet combat. So if someone hits me and takes out my fleet, only 30% of the resources that fleet was worth will be sitting in orbit. Now on Wesin, that number was 80%. In addition, Terra Z has a hundred percent deuterium cost. Deuterium is the fleet or the, the fuel for your fleet. So most servers have usually like a 50% deuterium setting. Terra Z has a hundred percent. So Terra Z was a much more peaceful uh, universe settings wise. And to me, after doing the nine or so months of those expedition combats, I just wanted to have somewhere peaceful where I didn't have to worry about being attacked by other players. So I opted for Terra Z just because the, the settings there looked to be the most peaceful out of the options I had. So when I moved over to Terra Z, I was at about 518 million points. And at that point, my main source of acquiring resources had shifted away from expeditions and over to my mines on all of my planets. I did attack a few people here or there, but Terra Z was generally has generally been a very quiet server, so it allowed for a very peaceful and steady growth for my account. By the end of 2020, let's see here. Yeah, by the end of 2020, I had gotten my account up from that 500 million points up to uh, 662 million. So about 150 million points worth of gain in the, the two or three months after the merge. Uh, through 2021, I basically just developed my account through the resources that were being produced through my mines. And by the end of 2021, I had gotten my account to over a billion points. Uh, so in that year, I had gained about 400 million points worth of resources. Uh, so I was at a billion, 57 million, 512,000. So pretty big leap through 2021. And now through 2022, my progress has largely been uh, quite slow in comparison. Right now, I am sitting at 1.255 million, uh, or no, 1.248 uh, billion points. So not as much progress so far this year, but that is because I have been saving resources for the past several months in preparation of the upcoming Life Forms expansion. So lots of resources being saved up. 
so that when that life forms expansion drops, I can just invest heavily into the life forms system, uh, which should offer me a significant jump in my resource production compared to had I just been investing in mines throughout the past couple of months. So with this account, um, the, you know, there's three different play styles really with O game. You can be a, a fleeter. A fleeter is somebody that is aggressively using their fleet to attack other players to acquire resources through attacking the other players. A miner is somebody who establishes their planets uh, focused on producing as many resources as possible uh, and just passively acquires resources. With that play style, you have to make sure that your planets are defended and that you are moving your resources to a central point to make sure that you can keep them all together and protect them all from other players and save up for your next set of upgrades. The third play style is a person that is doing the expeditions, which can be done uh, through the galaxy window. Expeditions are a PVE mechanic, and I will be covering them more in a future content piece. But expeditions are PVE. You're basically just sending out your fleets to... Um, do expeditions in slot 16 and through those expeditions you are acquiring resources you're acquiring additional ships uh you're potentially running into like just generated enemies that might attack your fleet while they're on the expedition uh, or you may run into a black hole and your fleet that you sent on the expedition could get destroyed um the Expedition playstyle, often referred to as Discoverer, is a decent playstyle, and I'll cover that, as I said, more in a future content piece, but it requires a lot more activity uh, because you need to constantly be sending out these expeditions to make up for your lowered production on your planets. So with fleeters, you know, you're getting your resources from attacking other players. With miners, you're just getting your resources from your planets. With the discoverers, you're just spamming expeditions to acquire as many resources as possible through the expedition mechanics. For me, I ended up going with the, the minor playstyle, so my class ended up being a collector for the production boost, and my alliance is using the trader class for the additional resource production. So I have opted for the more passive mining play style, uh, especially with the account being the size it is. I have developed the mines to a point where I would have to be extremely active for expeditions to match what I'm getting from my mines. So going with the mining play style with the account developed as much as it is just made sense to me. Now, for all of my planets, I generally try to get them in slot 15. So this is more of a classic setup, and it's not necessarily the setup you'd want to do if you were starting today. But I have all of my planets in slot 15 because slot 15 is the best uh, for deuterium production. Deuterium, again, is the fuel for your fleets. So getting your planets as cold as possible will increase your deuterium production. Other slots do have a variety of other benefits, like slot eight is really popular for people that are just setting up their accounts now because you just focus on metal production and you can get a lot of resources doing that. But for me, uh, when I developed the account, going slot 15, focusing on deuterium production was the optimal way. So there is two exceptions for planets that are not in slot 15, basically, and those are just in a safe system with my Alliance members so that I have a safe system to do my fleet saves in. So for my mines here, let's start off on the first planet. This planet has a temperature of negative uh, 122 C. The best you can get with slot 15 is a max temp of minus 130 C. So minus 122 C. It's fairly decent. It ranges from negative 90 C to negative 130 C. And as close as you can get to that negative 130, better it is. So with this planet, I have my metal mines at 45, crystal 37, deuterium 42. And you're going to see this pretty much on all of my planets. I try to keep a fairly consistent mine level on all of the planets that I have. 
All of my energy is coming from a fusion reactor, which I have at level 23. This is powering all of my mines and is also powering the, the crawlers that I have on my planet. Crawlers are a ship that you can build as a collector class player. Uh, and you can increase the, their production by being a collector also. So crawlers boost production, but drain a lot of power. But thankfully this fusion reactor is able to handle everything, especially uh, with the level that I have my energy technology at. So my energy tech is at 23 and my fusion reactor is also at 23. This gives me a massive amount of power and compared to solar plants, it takes up less slots on my planet. Uh, compared to solar sats, even if someone hits me, the fusion reactor is going to be there. If you get your power from solar sats, someone can attack you and wipe out those sats. Uh, with fusion reactors, even if someone attacks me, this thing is still going to be giving me power afterwards. For the facilities on this planet, this is going to be fairly standard on most of my planets. Uh, I do generally build the robotics factory up a little bit higher uh, than I really need it. Um, robotics factories increase the or decrease the time it takes for buildings to construct. So you see, if I want to build the next level of the robotics factory, it would take three minutes. Uh, by for for these other buildings, by increasing the level of the robotics factory and the nanite factory, I am decreasing the amount of time it takes to build the next level of them. Um, and given the amount of slots I have on most of these planets. I'll generally invest in a couple levels higher of the robotics factory and the shipyard just because it's pretty cheap to do. So my shipyard's at 14, just so I can build things faster. Uh, same for the research lab. I don't have any investment in Alliance depots on most of my planets. I just do not think these buildings are worth it in the current state of the game. Um, I don't have my missile silos up too far. Uh, generally on this server, I haven't had much of a need to worry about uh, missiles like coming at me or uh, needing to launch them at a target. And Nanite Factory is at level 9, so you're going to see this pretty common ac across most of my planets. Uh, many of the levels are going to be the same, um, especially with the mines. There's only a few planets that have different mine levels than this. For the ships that I have on each individual planet, I generally keep about 5,000 large cargoes on each planet just for daily uh, resource transportation. I do keep a few espionage probes and recyclers there as needed. And of course I have uh, crawlers built out as many as I need to get the max benefit from all of the mine levels that I have. For my defenses, I don't really have much defense, and that is because I have one of the largest fleets on the server. I can pretty much count on one hand the number of times that someone has spied on one of my planets in the past year. Uh, it's, it doesn't really happen. Most people are not going to mess with me just because of how high my military score is compared to most people on the server. So for most people, you would want to invest a little bit more in defenses on your planets. What I have here is basically nothing. Um, but for, for me, because this is a really slow, peaceful server, and because I do have a large combat fleet, people can see that I have that fleet, and they just leave me alone. So for the resource production on this planet, you can see here. Uh, getting quite a substantial boost from the crawlers, of course. I have those overcapped to run at 150% um, of the level there, which I think that is something you get from having one of the officers active. I, I might be wrong there, but... No, okay. So that's a bonus you have for being a collector, and then if you have the geologist at officer active, you get uh, a small bonus to how many crawlers you can have active. Okay. So even with the fusion reactor on, it's not consuming too much of the deuterium production for this planet. It's generating a fair amount of resources each day. So the next planet Proxima, pretty much the same thing. And this is, I'm going to go through these a bit faster. Now, uh, this planet's negative 124. 
Reminder, the best is negative 130. Same mine levels, same power source. The facilities are not as high all around. Um, the issue is with this planet, the, the fields there is not very high. So I only have seven more usable fields on this planet. Each building that I build is going to consume one of those slots. So being I only have seven slots left on this planet, uh, I'm not burning them on like shipyards or robotics factories as much here. I can increase those, the, the amount of fields that I have available by increasing the, the level of the terraformer, but I've already increased it a fair bit on this planet, as you can see with level 12. And uh, for right now, uh, it's fine. I just won't use this planet for building ships or things like that. So for the shipyard here, same thing. I usually keep a, about 5,000 large cargoes on each planet. Uh, you just don't see them all here right now because I had transferred my resources over to a moon earlier. Defense-wise, same thing, basically. There's basically no defenses here. If someone wanted to attack any of my planets, they could very easily get through the, this level of defense. Actually, let's look at the, the resource production on the planet quick. Uh, so similar amount of resource production as the first planet. It's got the same mine levels, just a slight difference in the, uh, the deuterium production because it's a slightly colder planet. In fact, if we compare... You can see how uh, these, this, so they have the same level on the deuterium mines, but because the Proxima planet is two degrees colder than the top planet there, Men with Hill, uh, there is just a little bit more production. So about 1500 more deuterium being produced per hour. Doesn't make that huge of a difference, but you know, uh, that's an extra five. About, yeah, about, what is it, about 500k uh, deuterium that I'm getting weekly. So, over time it adds up. Uh, next planet is Apollo. This planet is negative 115c, so it's one of my... Uh, it's not the warmest planet that I have, but it is definitely a little bit warmer. Same thing with the mines. The facilities, uh, the shipyards built up a little bit higher here. The nanite factory is a level higher, and this is a planet that I have set up. So if I want to build ships here, uh, I can easily build most ships in a second. The only ship that I cannot build in one second is a Death Star. So I can build up every ship that I really would need to very fast here. And if I take a look at the defenses, uh, it's pretty much the same thing as the others. Barely any defense. Barely any. For the production here, pretty much the same as the others. Now this planet is a little bit warmer than the last one. So if I do that comparison again, um, this planet is nine degrees warmer than Proxima was. So you can see the difference in the deuterium production. Uh, Proxima being at negative 124 C was getting 356 K deuterium per hour. Uh, at a base level and Apollo is getting 349.6. So you can see how getting your planets as cold as possible is really beneficial to the deuterium production. Okay, next planet. It's gonna be the same thing over and over again because the, the mines I generally try to keep balanced. Now this planet does have a few solar satellites and I believe that I had built these out with the intention of doing a terraformer upgrade at one point. As you can see, I'm quite limited with the fields on this planet also. I only have four slots left usable. So I probably built those solar sats to, to get this level of terraformer. Um, and if I wanna get another couple slots, then I would need to get my power up a bit further, uh, over double of what it currently is to be able to do the next level. So this planet, doesn't have any ships on it uh, other than the normal and those solar sats. Defense wise, nothing. 
you see in a picture here. But this planet is negative 116 C. Uh, so deuterium production is, it's okay. It's not the best that I have, but it's good. It's good enough. Kittimer, same mine levels, 45, 37, 42. Same amount of power coming from the fusion reactor. Uh, building your planets very similar is very common for, for most play styles, I believe. And that's pretty much the case with most of my planets. So I'm really going to start to speed up going through these because they're pretty much rinse and repeat. Show the resource settings here. Next planet, Matisse. This is negative 125C. Kittimer, if I forgot to mention, was 120. Negative 120. Uh, so Matisse, pretty good production from the mines there. It's only five degrees off of the best values you can have. Uh, I can do some ship building on here because I have the uh, the Nanite Factory at level 10. So if I want to build ships here, once again, the only ship that I can't build in one second is going to be the Death Star. Everything else can be built in one second. And defenses, a little bit more here, but realistically, any large fleet that would be attacking me is going to punch right through these defenses. So team player is negative 122C. Uh, so pretty good deuterium production. Uh, pretty similar to the last planet. I could build ships here. I think everything but the Death Star will go. Oh, no. The destroyer is two seconds here. So I need to just increase the shipyard or the nanite just a little bit to, to get this down to a second. And defense is here. Bad. You seeing a pattern yet? Uh, Pegasus has a little bit more defense wise. This is my best planet for deuterium production. It's at negative 130 C. Uh, so I have a little bit more built up on it, but still not that much. Um, same amount of fleet here. Facilities. Same as the last planet, really. The difference here is because this planet has a negative 130c temp on it i have invested and increased the deuterium mine one level higher than most of my planets so it's level 43 whereas most of the others were level 42. now what does that do for production that at level 43 and this being a really cold planet i am getting a little bit more out of this than i would some of these other planets so if i do a side by side this is still a picture of that proxima planet which has deuterium 42 and a negative 124 C temperature. So it's six degrees off the best you can get. You can see that the amount of deuterium that I am getting uh, is significantly better on Pegasus here with that higher level. But the, the amount that I'm getting per week is also significantly better because I have a 40% uh, deuterium production booster active on this planet. Being it has such good production, I decided to use the the deuterium boost that I got from some of the events to further enhance the production levels of this planet. So it's uh, producing quite a bit more deuterium than most of the other planets, as you can see. Okay, next planet is Daedalus. This has a temperature of negative 123C. I this is still 45 metal, 37 crystal, 42 deuterium, 23 fusion reactor. You know, these, these are all basically the same. And I think if you get into O game, you're probably going to end up, if you go with a, a play style like this, you end up having most of your planets built out exactly the same, pretty much. So nothing special on that planet. Over on Nukara, pretty much the same thing. This planet does have Nanite 10 on it, so I can do uh, really fast shipyard building on this for most ships. And I use this planet for trading resources at one point, so it has a bit higher storage than most of my other planets. Next up is Pine Gap. So this is a slot 14, but it has my second best temperature at negative 128C. 
Now, it's very important to note that a slot 14 planet should not have these temperatures. So what happened is uh, when I merged over from Wesin to Terra Z, somebody was already in the slot 15 in this system. So when that happens during a merge, it will push you up a slot if possible. However, when it does that, it retains the temperatures that you had previously had on that planet. So while I have a slot 14, it is still giving me the uh, temperatures that I had on the slot 15 that it originally was. So that's a, a very nice benefit that I got out of the merge. And being it is only two degrees off the best temperature, I also increase the deuterium mine to one level higher than most of my other planets. The, the storage on, these plan on this planet is also quite a bit better. Uh, facilities wise, this planet has a lot of slots, so I have built it out to do any shipyard building that I would need to do. Uh, everything, I, I have a lot of flexibility with how much room it has, so I can build it out quite a bit. Not any ships on it. I don't leave ships out on my planets, really, other than the, the large cargoes that I'd mentioned. A uh, little bit of defense is on here, but not, not a ton. Uh, but definitely better than most of my other planets. Now, production-wise, I also have a 40% booster active on this planet. So just a comparison of how much of a difference that two degrees makes between this and the better planet. Uh, let me take a picture of the resource settings of Pegasus. And then let's compare those to Pine Gap. So Pegasus being two degrees colder has a pretty big jump up there. I mean, it's not drastically different, but that's an extra 600K deuterium that it is producing each week because of the, the two degrees colder. So it, it is a difference. It's not that huge, but uh, just shows why if you can get a planet as cold as possible, that's very good to do so. Next up, I have the planet that I now have in slot 15 of that system. So originally, like I said, when I moved over to this server, there was a player occupying the uh, 15th slot of this system. Um, I have a bit of a fleet and I wanted to move in a planet in the slot 15 next to that planet at slot 14, just so I'd have another system where if I wanted to fleet save, I could do so. Uh, so I pretty much just kept attacking the player that had that slot 15. I was being a bit of a dick, uh, but eventually they relented and they they moved out of that uh, slot. They relocated their planet out of there. Um, it did take a little bit, but uh, it did happen. So I moved the planet into that slot 15 and the... I, I got a bit of justice because that planet ended up having really terrible temperatures. So the slot 14 that I have here, that of course, like I'd mentioned was previously a slot 15 that got pushed up because of the merge, uh, that had a negative 128 degree temperature. This, this planet that I moved into the slot 15 below it got a negative 102 degree temperature. So I, I was very unlucky with the RNG during that relocation. Uh, got a bit screwed over, but it is what it is. I, I'm just glad to have that planted in the slot 15 slot. So I have another good cheap option for fleet saving if I need it. So this planet is my original planet. In most cases, it's almost always best to just delete your home world at some point and, uh, just use one of the slot eights that you've colonized as your home world that has a much higher uh, base slot count for how many buildings you can put on it. The home worlds are generally fairly limited, but I was an idiot and didn't do that. But thankfully I've invested enough in it over time that I've been able to make up for that shortcoming and have plenty of slots still left to use. So same mines here. I have 5,000 solar sats here, probably because I was working on the terraformer at some point. Uh, and just needed that little bit of extra power. But 
This is pretty standard for my planets. Nothing really on it. Defense wise, it's okay. Nothing special. Now we move into uh, the safe system that I have with my alliance. So a safe system is a system that you and your alliance or your allies fill. Um, and by filling the system, there's it, it takes longer for someone to attack you if they're coming from outside your solar system. When someone is attacking you, especially if you have a large fleet and they have a large fleet, they want to be in the same system as you because it costs less uh, deuterium to launch from the same system, and it's also going to be faster for their attack to go through. With me having a safe system filled up with my alliance, this means that people have to attack from outside the system, which is drastically going to increase the amount of fuel that it costs them and how long it takes for the their fleet to actually arrive at my planet or moon. So... These planets, I have two that are not in slot 15 or that ha do not have slot 15 level temperatures. And that is because they're in a safe system with my Alliance members. So Gambit here is a really warm planet, uh, but it is a slot eight. So it's got a max temp of 66 degrees Celsius and that's positive, not negative. So not the best deuterium production, but it's a slot eight and slot eight passively gets a 35% boost to metal production. So slot eight is very good for metal production. And because of that, I have invested heavily in the metal mines on this planet. Most of my planets have metal 45, but with this planet being that it is slot eight, my only slot eight, I decided to invest further in the metal mines. So I do see some additional benefits from that when I look at the, the resource settings. Um, if you compare to one of my other planets, like if I look at Pegasus, which is that negative 130 degrees Celsius slot 15 that I have with metal mine 45, uh, after all of the boosts that I have, I end up producing 1.665 million metal per hour. This planet with a metal 47 and that passive boost that slot eight gets for metal production is generating 2.84 million metal per hour. So you compare the weekly production numbers or even the daily and that's slot eight. You can see why most people uh, nowadays like to go for slot eight and just focus on metal production. It's, it's a very large amount of metal that you're getting in slot eights. Now, this planet is my only planet that is currently uh, being powered by solar satellites. The reason for that is that this planet was fairly small. It was initially a slot 15. Uh, back when I started, I didn't know that you could colonize into a slot 8 to get the really large planet size and then move that slot 8 to a slot 15 position. Uh, that had been a fairly new change around the time I had started, so I wasn't aware of it. And... I found out a bit late after I'd heavily invested in some of these planets. So uh, this planet was unfortunately one of them that was a, originally a slot 15. And it was very expensive to correct that mistake. So you see that my power level here is really high. And if I go back to the shipyard, you can see I have 118,000 solar satellites on this planet. Each of them produces 34 power. So... I uh, used that power to increase the terraformer up to a really high level. I used a plus power uh, item, uh, a plus energy production item to increase the amount of power that I was generating on the planet. And then I did terraformer 14. I could easily go and grab like terraformer 15 if I wanted, but uh, right now I don't feel that I need that. I have plenty of space on this planet and the only reason I really increased the terraformer to this point is because with this being slot eight, the closer to the top of the system you are, the, the warmer your planet is, the more power you get from solar satellites. So if I look at the solar sats on this planet, this is my warmest planet at 66 degrees Celsius. I'm getting plus 34 power per solar satellite. Now, if I go back and look at like Langara here, which also has some solar sats, I'm getting plus four power 
per solar sap because this is a slot 15. And the colder your planet is, the worse it gets. Like if I look at Pegasus, each solar sat would only give me one power because this is a negative 130 degrees Celsius planet. So it, it's not really cost effective for me to go and build the solar sats up on all my planets to that, are, that need the fields for the, from the terraformer. Uh, it would be very expensive to, to do so. So I just, I haven't done that on most of my planets. Uh, Gambit here was the exception because it's in slot eight and it was getting a lot of power per solar satellite compared to the other planets. Looking at the defense here, a little bit more defense here. All of the system or all of the planets that I have in the safe system with my alliance, I have a bit more uh, defenses built up on. These defenses would act as just fodder in a large fleet engagement. If someone were to destroy my moons and my fleet had to land on a planet, I would have some of these defenses built up to help uh, defend, help work alongside my fleet to defend against the incoming attack. So I haven't had to deal with anything like that, thankfully, because of how quiet the server is. But uh, that's the reason you'll see these next three planets here, including this one, have a little bit more investment in defenses. So moving over to Lazarus. This is a slot 13 with a temperature of negative 18 Celsius. So slot 13s have a range of negative 50 to negative 10. I, I got screwed over with that temp, as you can tell then, because negative 18 is closer to the, the hot side of those temps. So not as good as it could have been. And the deuterium production definitely suffers because of that. So right now I don't have deuterium 42 done on this planet like I do most of the others. Um, and that's just because I'm not going to get as much deuterium from this planet as a slot 15. In the future, I'll increase this to a, a level 42 dupe mine, but right now uh, it's not been my top priority. Facilities wise, uh, this planet is my main shipyard. If I want to build something, I am building it on this planet. This thing has nanite level 12, shipyard level 18, like if I am building something, it's it's right here. Uh, and that's also why I have my storage buildings built up so high here, because uh, if I'm doing any resource trading, it is happening here. So every ship other than the Death Star can be built in a second. For the Death Star itself, 20 seconds. I can build a Death Star in 20 seconds on this planet, which is insanely fast. You know, if I could get that down more, that'd be great. But uh, given the current state of the server, I think it being at 20 seconds build time for a Death Star is pretty damn solid. And of course, this is an eight times economy speed server. So that does factor into how long it takes for ships to be built. And this has my best defenses out of any planet that I have. We've got a million rocket launchers, million light lasers. 400,000 heavy lasers, 25k Gauss cannons, 75k ion cannons, and 10k plasma turrets. Now, it's not as good as what, like, Demon Freak has, if you've ever watched his videos. Uh, he's actually in this alliance, too. Uh, he's a nice, nice guy. You should go check out his videos on his turtle setup that he has on this universe. But his turtle is set up insanely well. This planet has just had a lot of investment in the defenses because uh, I figure that if someone is going to attack my planets uh, to tr or attack my moons to try and take out my fleet, I'd probably do what I could to get my fleet to be put on this planet uh, or the slot 15 here. And I'll explain that slot 15 here in a second. But this planet has very heavy defenses and... I'll probably continue working on this, the slot eight and the slot 15, uh, but the other planets, I'm still not too worried about the, the, the defenses on. Like I said, nobody has really attacked me or spied on my planets in quite a long time on this universe. So let's take a look at the, the slot 15. The temperatures here, negative 111 Celsius. Not good, about average for a slot 15. The mines, same as normal, really. Resource production here is, it's okay. It's, it's about average. 
facilities wise um i don't have the nanite as high here but it's still fairly high uh this planet all of my planets in the safe system are basically set up so i can build every ship but the death star in one second um i could obviously change that if i wanted i've got the resources to do so uh but i think me only having the one planet can that can build death stars really fast is perfectly fine given the current state of this server uh, not much in the shipyard, and I forgot to mention on the facilities here. The reason this planet is called Space Dock Meta is because <clears throat> during the initial set of reward events that they had ran a year or so back, they had been giving out Space Dock levels as a potential reward from some of the re reward events, and I abused that mechanic to get a really high level space stock on this planet. So space stocks, if my fleet was above this planet and attacked, I would get more of my fleet back, uh, given that this is a higher level. So with this server being a 30% debris field setting server, if my fleet was attacked on the moon of this planet or on the planet itself, I would get 38 and a half percent of my fleet back just through the wreck field here. So uh, that's ignoring the 30% that I could get back from the debris field. So uh, the space dock here, it's very advantageous for me to keep my fleet on these systems in the safe system, especially given the space dock levels on the defenses that I have here, uh, because if someone does attack me, they're going to have a much harder time in the system, especially being that ACS is enabled on the server. So the other large fleets in my alliance could come and help me out. So shipyard, nothing special here. Defense wise, it's not as good as the other planets. And um, I'll probably go through and invest a little bit more in the defenses here. Honestly, I, I really shouldn't have it on par with what I showed you on the Lazarus planet there. Uh, so the defenses right now actually sort of suck as I look at them compared to Lazarus. Like Lazarus just had a lot more going for it. Um, but given this planet has the really high space stock level, I should be investing more in the defenses here. And we'll probably do so after this video. So resource production here isn't too super crazy. Uh, like I said, it's about average. So let's take a look at my researches now. Um, as I had shown earlier, I have energy tech at level 23. Uh, this is helping boost how much power that I'm getting from the deuterium or not the deuterium, the, uh, the fusion reactors, uh, fusion reactors scale with your energy tech levels. So if I can pull up here. You guys know me in spreadsheets. Of course I've got spreadsheets for this crap. So if I look at how much power I get per level, like if I were to increase my energy level to 24 from the 23 it's currently at, I would get an extra 40,000 energy per planet. So energy uh, technology and the fusion reactors go hand in hand together. Laser tech, there's no reason to really improve this past like level 12, but it was really cheap. So I just, for whatever reason, decided to get it a few levels higher. Ion technology, not really much benefit to getting it to the level I have it at, but if you have to deconstruct buildings, it will reduce the cost of uh, deconstructing your buildings. Hyperspace tech is at 19. I should increase this, but uh, the life forms has a technology in it that increases your cargo capacity. So I think it's, it'll probably be cheaper for me to go that route if I end up getting that in my tech tree. Um, plasma technology is at 20, so that's giving me a boost to all of my production. Combustion drive at 22. Impulse drive at 18. Hyperspace at 17. Um, for the size of my account, I feel like the hyperspace should probably be a bit higher. Probably same for the impulse drives, but um, I'm going to hold off on doing any more t uh, research upgrades until after the Lifeforms expansion. Espionage is at 22, and then because I have all officers active, I have plus three levels uh, effectively for the espionage technology. 
Computer tech is at 21. Astrophysics is at 27. That's why I have 15 planets here. Uh, every other level that you get with astrophysics is another planet that you can colonize. So astrophysics is a very important research to focus on, uh, but it does scale up to be quite expensive as you get to the higher levels. Uh, my intergalactic research network, this basically, uh, when you're building up a research, this will factor in other planets for each level you have of it. So if you have one level of this intergalactic research network, also called IRN, uh, it will factor in one your current planet's research lab and then one other. Uh, the higher the level, the more planets it's factoring in and more research lab levels you're getting to reduce the time it takes to build certain things. I have my Graviton tech at four. This does nothing for you. Uh, the only reason I have my Graviton at level four is because of this, this planet where I built up my terraformer really far. Um, being I had invested the resources to get the, the power so high to build up the terraformer to 14, I figured why not just also go ahead and get Graviton four done. It was basically the same cost. So uh, being I was doing the terraformer, why not do that at the same time? Weapons 23, shield 23, and armor 24. All of these you can do cheaper if you invest in specific researches in the life forms tech trees. So I had been working on increasing these, but uh, given that the life forms expansion has ways to reduce the cost of these, I figured I would just wait for that expansion to come out before I improve these further. So that is my current research. Um, and let's take a look at where I stand high score wise here. So on TerraZ, I am the, I have the eighth largest account and worldwide, my account ranks at um, 1166. So uh, with how many people are playing the game, it's, it's a fairly large account. For my economy, I have the ninth best economy on the server. Uh, it wouldn't take much for me to get back into eighth place, but I'm going to hold off on any more mine uh, buildings until after the Lifeform's content release because that has a lot of buildings and technologies in it that are going to significantly increase my resource production. So it would be more cost effective for me to use my resources on those technologies and buildings in the Lifeform's release than it would be to invest in mines as is. Research wise, I have fallen quite a bit down to 11th. A lot of people have done astrophysics 28 and 29 to get their 16th planet. That is something that I want to do, uh, but that would take quite a bit of resources. I've, I've done calculations on it and um, with how many resources I currently have, it would take me another three months worth of saving to get enough resources to get astrophysics done. And as nice as that would be, it'll be much faster for me to save up for astrophysics once life forms is out. I'm expecting, given the testing that I have done over on Bermuda, uh, which may be just, just a little bit of testing, um, I'm expecting to see somewhere in the neighborhood of a 200 to 300% improvement in my resource production if I build things out correctly. So uh, I'll be talking about that a lot in future content releases. I'm going to be talking a lot about life forms, um, diving into the numbers and all that and everything once I've uh, gotten some spreadsheets done to analyze the cost of everything. But I think it's best for me right now to just save up and wait for life forms before I do any more research or mine upgrades. Military wise, I have the fourth largest military on the fleet and I am in an alliance with the third largest military and the seventh. But Demon Freak here, um, most of his military points are defenses, so he doesn't have too large of a fleet. Um, yeah, so between myself and Holy Buckets here, most people leave us alone 
I mean, technically, Ace and Mercury could go and try to attack myself or Holy, but it would be really expensive for them to do so. And if we work together, combined our fleets, like Holy Buckets and I, could cause a lot of damage to their fleets and make the attack not necessarily worth it for them to do. So military points destroyed. I am third on the server. Um, of course, as I said at the beginning, I had abused the combat expeditions while those were around with version seven, um, as did Ace and Mercury, as you can see here. Uh, so I had a lot of growth from that, as did they. Got a lot of resources out of the uh, combat expeditions. Military points lost. I have the second highest. My fleet has never, in the, or with this account, my fleet has not yet been wiped out by another player. Um, so all of my military points lost are from doing combat expeditions. And I got really unlucky near the end of that and kept running into uh, quite a few black holes with my uh, combat fleets. So it was not a fun time because when my combat fleets ran into a black hole during an expedition, they were just lost. You just lose them. They're gone. So lost quite a bit to that. But in the end, uh, the expeditions were quite profitable for me, obviously. So lost a lot, but it was worth it. And honor points wise, I am 38th on the server. Um, I have had a few attacks on this server, but the issue is, is that when I came over here, I was negative combat points. So or negative honor points. And if you have negative honor points, you cannot or other people can attack you and get 100 percent of the resources that you have. So it was very important for me to get to a positive honor points amount. So um, I just kept attacking people to, to do that. Um, combat wise, I've had a few hits on this server, nothing too special. Uh, shortly after the merge, I did end up running into this fleet. I didn't have enough deuterium to send as large of a fleet as I could, so I did take heavier losses than I should have. Um, and because I did this attack as an ACS, I lost a lot of honor points. So this this is why I had to recover so much. Um, but this is my best attack on the server, and that was wiping out 2,000 Death Stars and uh, all the other ships you see listed here. So... It's been a fairly quiet time on the server. The only time that I have been hit for a significant amount was uh, when I tried to hit another player called HH3. Um, I tried to hit him and he launched his fleet at me and the, the timing got a bit screwed up. So we, we missed each other's fleets basically. And he, uh, he got the defenses that I had on that planet pretty hard. Um, so it wasn't really that big of a loss for me. It's, but that is the only hit that has really happened against me on this server or this universe. Um, officer wise, I have all the officers active, like I'd mentioned earlier. Um, and I have them active for a very long time. I think that investing in the officers is generally worth it. Some people may disagree, but I think the bonuses from them are worth it. And it basically works out to be five or six bucks a month to keep your officers all active, uh, which to me is worth it. They give you a lot of nice bonuses, and this is something I'll talk about more in the future, but um, I think if you're actively playing the game, if you wait for a Dark Matter sale, you can easily get these at a fairly decent price. So last thing really to talk about is my inventory for all of the uh, paid items that I have. Almost all of these have been acquired completely free to play. Um, you acquire bonuses just passively playing the game. You can bid on them in the auction uh, with resources. Um, they have reward events that drop these. So I have a lot of items that you would traditionally have to pay for that I just have sitting here. So I've used the plus slap plus slot items on most of the planets that need them. So there's a few nice things in here, but the majority of the bonuses I have are these damn energy boosters. And uh, 
they're nice, but they're pretty much worthless for me. So not a ton else in here. Of course, have a reserve of fleet slot bonuses just in case I ever needed those. I have class change items just in case, like if I've, if I was ever under a serious attack, I would immediately use one of these general items. And that is because the general class uh, increases your combat research levels by two and gives you some other bonuses. So if I was ever under attack, then I would use the one of those general class items to increase my uh, combat technologies to make my fleet more effective in combat. As for my fleet, I'm realizing that I didn't show that off. So let's take a look at that quick. 10.6 million light fighters, a million heavy fighters, a million cruisers, 100,000 battleships, 1.3 million battle cruisers, 3,900 bombers, not a very uh, effective ship in my opinion, 51k destroyers, 16,000 death stars, 18,000 reapers, 400,000 pathfinders. So the combat fleet alone, that's, that's a fairly large and effective fleet. Um, it probably could use a few more destroyers or reapers, to be honest, maybe even battleships, but for the, the fleets that have been on the server, the biggest issue is going to be the fodder. So I think in the future, I'll probably invest in like another couple million light fighters uh, and I think maybe some more cruisers to help deal with the light fighter fleets out there would probably be good. I have a million small cargoes, 1.3 million large cargoes, a million recyclers, 1.2 million espionage probes. On Wesin, you could use espionage probes for storage to transfer resources. Um, on TerraZ, that is not true. That is disabled. So unfortunately, having this many espionage probes doesn't do a ton for me other than add additional fodder for if I were attacked, there'd be more entities that have to be engaged in the combat. So I don't get much benefit out of them, but I have them from before, so I'm not going to get rid of them for now. But that is my fleet. Now the, the moons don't really have any defenses on them. That's something I need to work on. Uh, the only moon that has any defenses is the Lazarus moon. Um, that's the planet that has the large amount of defense. But facilities on all, on all these moons are uh, generally quite similar. I'll show, just go through these quick. Um, most of these moons look like this. You know, they they have a jump gate built, a couple levels of sensor phalanx, um, and lunar bases up, of course, robotics factory and shipyard. It's it's nothing that impressive on these moons. So I'm not even going to go through all of these because most of these do not have any buildings on them or any more than what you see here. So most of them are quite disappointing, to be blunt. Um, I should invest more in building up defenses on them, uh, especially that can help as a defensive action against uh, people that are attacking me, but... That is not something that I have done so far, which is a long-term mistake on my part and something I need to, uh, to fix. So that is my account. I know this was a really long, hour-long video, but if you're into a game, you know, if you were curious as to what a, an account of this size looks like, you know, hopefully this has been interesting for you. Um, I expect for most of you that this video is probably a little bit boring, but if you're still here at this point, Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to be doing more Ogin content in the future, and most of it's not going to be like this. Um, I didn't realize looking, you know, when I started this, that it was going to be over an hour long. But it does take time to go through and show off uh, this many planets, this many moons, talk about everything. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to let me know. I'll be doing quite a few game videos in the near future, especially as the expansion ramps up towards launch. So if you have any questions about that, stay tuned because there's going to be some videos coming out in the very near future about the Lifeforms expansion. And it's going to be in a more organized format, uh, probably on a PowerPoint or something like that, just to, to make it a smoother flow and to keep myself on track better.
But that is going to be it for today. Thank you to all channel members. Um, and thank you to anyone still watching. Uh, hopefully this is entertaining for you. But that is it for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.